uh, I'm presenting a new architecture that is customized to behavior in an environment. Human has used tools and machines to enhance their capa capa capability. In the future, machines, imp machines improve human physical abilities. Furthermore, you should work even in emotional or psychological ways. This wearable machine, Cloud Clock, can help to detect, just hold a personal space, and then get rid of the boundary with this cloud. Cloud Clock is a wearable device that redefines rela relationship among subject, object, and environment. The effect is the transmission of cloud that distort the subject experience of environment. The cloud extracts from into patches of light and color. And it even renders partially obscure the subject herself, creating genderless and raceless being. That is defined only by her relationship to surround, surrounding object. The main concept is provoking new relationship between subject and then the surrounding by using fog. The fog is generated by the wearable machine I called Cloud Clock as an extension of the body. Our approach is started from Hedgehog's dilemmas, which is an analogy about human intimacy. Hedgehogs seek to become close to one another in order to share their body heat, but they have to keep a certain distance because of their sharp kills. In the same ways, this machine is activated on distance of personal space and reacts to whole environment. For instance, human re responds differently with a certain distance, such as insecure and then confidence. This machine creates non-directional soft cloud as an insecure response or directional sharp stream as a reaction of confidence. This performance affects experience of spatial consequences. This diagram shows how the machine operates in a specific space in response to the distance among people. While the fog trail tracing movement of human body attract people around the machine, soft cloud provide the other with a hesitation as a response to the ambiguous invitation. By using controlled valves, we can choose specific nodules out of two, making different performance. The selective nodule emits different types of fog. The fog is created by heat exchanger and transported to, to the final nodule air, by the air pump. The, body, the main body of the cloud clock is composed of tubes with three air pumps, two valves controlled by electronic circuit, and two different types of nodules. Proximity sensor collects data of the physical distance between subject and its surrounding. With the information, the circuit controls the movement of valves. Specifically, one main gear controls two sub-gears at the same time. When, open uh, when one valve is opened, the other is closed. The air pump produces decent pressure for the movement of fog. The threshold of the changing performance is defined based on personal space in proxemics for the nonverbal communication. Depending on this threshold, control circuit can choose one order to decide specific performance. First image shows mode one performance. The creating soft cloud around the head. Mode one takes a role of this appearance. Second one performs mode two creating sharper stream behind the body. The motor, function, uh, motor functions as a seduction. Motor one is a part of fog tube with a large of a punched hole. Fog is emitted through these holes on the mode one performance. And the tube is kneaded and decorated like a rough color from the 17th century in uh, Western Europe in order to make non-directional soft cloud. In the cloud space, the device usually performs mode one, generating non-directional soft cloud in order to keep her personal space. During the mode one performance, the subject is getting disappeared behind the cloud and vanished from object view. This air pump, control circuit, and the sensor and gearbox. 
This is the testing version of the mode one performance. Soft cloud is generated around the head. <coughs> In order to verify the capability of the infrared proximity sensor on the control circuit, I just use hand, you know. When the boundary of the predefined personal space is invaded by other objects or surrounding environment, the machine performs mode one. Eventually, the dense cloud visibly obscures and blurs the threshold of personal space. When the mode one is performing, the cloud creates visual interruption. The subject vanishes into the cloud from object view. In the cloud, other objects and environment disappear from subject view, and the subject can recognize only herself in the infinite space. That is the cloud clock. Thank you. Um, I can, yeah. Well, who, I, I understand the, the, the concept, I think, but is this, who is actually u using this, uh, the, the cloud club? Uh, actually, this is not for the, the usual, uh, the uh, ordinary the life, the okay. life things. But I think this uh, machine can make very different ambience to the, the other people in the, some specific event. So I think. It's very good for the PS1, a kind of PS1 project because every, so many people can wear this machine and then small group can make it a thicker uh, fork or some kind of in the, uh, not, uh, not less dense area, they can see anything. It means the people uh, can uh, change their uh, personal uh, private space or public space. At the immediate, so immediately. Would, so would they, would they go out and just wear, wear this in public, or would it be for some specific event where, where, you, where you know that someone's wearing the cloud book? Does uh, that make sense? Is that the question? Um, what, what, so is, is it that, like, so is, is it some sort of a, are you saying it's like a PS1 event? Uh, I mean, there's some kind of place for the making some kind of sp uh, specific event, you know. Okay. Yeah, because uh, my so device can change the ambience. Yeah, it's not just for an ordinary. It's, like I want to be the ordinary, but it's kind of the so machine is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's possible. <laughs> it's possible. It's yeah, <laughs> because this. Uh, so I have the one problem because the, this prototype is I just using. It's not. Move, uh, not movable because it's a prototype because I have to use very cheap heat ex exchanger but I found the very small uh, movable heat exchanger with battery uh, size like looks like this uh -huh. but it's very expensive that's why I just use the prototype but if I can make this device at a very low price people can use this machine uh, like, uh, such as like uh, the eyeglasses or bicycle things you know so uh, as I mentioned the first time, the people use machines to enhance their capability. But capability means not only the uh, physical things. I wanted to make change it the emotional or psychological way too. So uh, some people want to change it, the, uh, want to make some experience more, you know, some funny things. They can wear my, my machine. Uh, I mean, not for prototype, so I'm mean, final one. But they can. Uh, give them not only for the he uh, him the subject itself, but it can give some change the uh, the different uh, ambience to to other people. It's a fascinating project. Yeah, I mean, it feels like something out of a William Gibson novel. Yeah, uh, it's definitely intriguing and, and uh, very provocative presentation. The way the film, everything is very well done. Thank you. Um, whether I buy it or not. Uh, I'm totally intrigued by it. You know, whether I yeah. think it's actually a viable kind of public use yeah. of whether it's going to achieve this this kind of uh, uh, it seems like it's more of like an emotional cloak. You know, it's, it's, right. it's to create your own physically. Mm -hmm. You're creating your own personal zone. Um, yeah. It's. I think the interesting thing is that, uh, that comes to mind as far as the the timing of this and is that we seem to be 
not to get too much into the design, critiquing the design and the intent of it, but mm -hmm. um, I find it kind of ironic in, a set, in this time that we're kind of really in this cloud of sensory overload of information and everything that was, as we go through our everyday life. This is almost exploiting that, and I find it really, I'm kind of torn because I, I think it's exploiting it in the sense that it's not, cl it's clouding us even more, but at the same time, it's maybe clouding a little bit of the stuff away yeah. where we can have a moment to think instead of being completely bombarded by everything at the same time. So I, I think that um, you know the next step would be to uh, to stage this event. You know, instead of the one person, because the singular person always by themselves. Yeah, that's right. You don't see that interaction with other people, which is mm -hmm. kind of like what this is about. It's not yeah. necessarily about an individual, it's about how we interact mm -hmm. with each other. Yeah. The distance between each other. Like I think my, uh, the machine, uh, I think can make the more, uh, how can I say, the interesting uh, experience with uh, the more device. I mean, it's not, if you have the more than three the machines like this one, so if the three people is come around, the, the come together, then they make it more thicker and more the private the space sure. in the cloud. Okay. But you know the the, the cloud has I mean, because uh, my original idea is from is uh, the making some kind of patch of the light and colors. Yeah. So actually, we always think about architecture should be some kind of permanent things like a wall and column things. But this kind of movable architecture, you can make some kind of their own their own space or some different ambience everywhere. Yeah. Uh, really quickly, I, I, again, I think it's a fascinating idea. I'm going to be honest, I didn't get it until I saw the video. Uh, so the images up front, again, a little dark in the setting. Very beautiful, though. I just looked at them as beautiful images. I had trouble seeing the text, and, and that was a little bit mm -hmm. tough for me in this instance. But as soon as I saw the video, it finally all clicked. So thank you for doing the video. Uh, yeah. It's because of the, the different resolution. Like, so on my the, on my display is should be fine, but I know. yeah, I just I just okay. terrifying. Yeah. I cannot yeah. leave the display. Yeah. So yeah. The display doesn't matter. Yeah. It's our display. <laughs> yeah. No, no. Yeah. I could see that that would translate better, and if I had it right in front of me, or if it's on a smaller screen. But um, if you were to have to present it again in a, this format, I would bump up some of the contrast to help. Uh, well, I think you'll find in most presentations, anytime that something's projected, it's going to be yeah. downgraded in quality a little bit. Or mm -hmm. and, be a little I mean, that's a lesson for everybody um, that if you're going in for a for a pitch like this, especially the, you know, the last one where it's half a billion dollars, um, <laughs> which those images looked nice, the first ones were really dark. Should plug it into a projector and throw it on the wall before yeah. you're coming. Yeah, that's right. See, whoa, wait a minute. And if you have to make a particular, you, know, you have to bump up the contrast twice as much as you as you think, and save that as a presentation file, mm -hmm. not the printable one. Then that's what you do. But you always make sure that you're you're kind of not. The worst is getting there and being like, oh, sorry, yeah, it's brighter on my screen. Yeah, that's that, right. It doesn't really do as much good. Yeah. I, I would say too, it, as much as um, you know, uh, I should mention the, the darkness of the text, um, and it brings up another point. There's obviously a, a language. Uh, barrier, and you know, I'm, I'm trying to understand through your accent, mm -hmm. trying to follow as much yeah. as I can, which is completely fine. I am following, I'm puttering along, um, but this is, you have the opportunity to really, you know, flash the words that are very, very meaningful, bright and big, so I yeah. can follow along with maybe some of the harder concepts. All right, yeah. um, and use use what you have. If, if there is, if you're presenting to a bunch of people who don't speak your language and may, maybe have a hard time, might miss some of the things you're saying use this as an advantage to clarify those things so you can kind of keep moving and we don't have to That's try right. hard to, to, to follow along and yeah. miss something important. Thank you. Yeah, I appreciate your effort. I appreciate you going through this and, and this type of event. I think it's a great opportunity for you to try to showcase those skills. Thank you.